Ouais. Oh, ok, attendez. Je vais Okay. Hi guys, can you can you um, see and hear me clearly? Okay. Yeah, great. This one. Great, I'm very sure. Okay. I'll just make sure, yeah. Yeah, hi guys, let me know in the comment section whether you can see and hear me clearly. So in today's session, we'll be talking about the last part of trade management, which is um, trailing stop loss techniques, right? This is also a part of, um, you know, previously we have talked about um, take profit stop loss, which is part one of four. And then we have the um, also the partial profit and break even, which is part two of the session on trade management. And then we have part three, which is idea and validation. And now we have come to the last part of um, part four of four, which is trailing stop loss techniques. So this has concluded the um, the whole part of you know the anatomy of trade that we have been talking about, which is so important. Okay, so before I start the webinar series, let us give the rest of the attendees some time to come in before I start, right? Let me know where, where you guys are tuning in from. So right now it's um, 6 p.m. in Singapore. Okay. I'll be your host for today. And I'm Annabelle. So for some of you guys, um, I haven't seen. Let me know if you are uh, attending this session or rather Iron FX for the first time. Okay. So I've seen some familiar and unfamiliar names. Okay, hi. Thank you. Let me just check whether I have got all the pages um, that I require. Okay. Let us just let us just give the rest uh maybe one more minute before I start. Okay, let's just start the session without further ado. Okay, so today's webinar series with IronFX, uh, we are talking about trade management part 404, which is trailing stop loss techniques, where I'll be covering some of, um, you know, different techniques to put um, your stop losses. You know, we often want to, in trading, we often want to maximize our profits and um, um, obviously, you know, cut our, cut our losses, right? Maximize profit minimum losses, right? Okay, oh, before I start the session, maybe just let me guide you guys real quick on um, where you can look at our past webinar series or if you have missed today's session, you can come to IronFX. Let me just copy this uh, and paste in the chat. Okay. Okay, so if you have missed any of our webinar series or if you want to re-watch or have a refresh, refresher course on some of the uh, past webinars, you can come to this page, click on past webinars. And this will be the page where we have all the um, recorded series. So if you are looking for English series, these are all the English series that we have. Um, all the way to, I don't know, probably September, you know, September. Yeah, we have all the series here, live trading, MACD strategies, um, your Fibonacci, 
etc. You can find all the recorded series here. Okay, top action setups. So don't worry if you have missed any of our sessions and as well as today's session will be recorded, right? But um, probably give it a couple days before it's been uploaded, right? Okay, and another page that I want to bring you guys to is um, the VIP room, which we have in collaboration with INFX. So Everest Fortune Group actually has a special collaboration with INFX where we have this um, VIP trading room, right? So we, we give exclusive market forecasts Okay, on the page itself, later I will show you guys um, how it looks like. So exclusive market forecast. Okay, um, you have, if you have any questions, we can answer. We have all our um, analysts as well as prop traders. And Desmond himself, he will be able to answer any of the questions that you have personally. Okay, you can request, you can even request for any uh, market forecast that you, you would like us to maybe analyze or, or to help out with. So this is the access to the premium service. We have five tailored um, account types depending on how much deposit you have with INFX. So these are the amounts and these are the different um, tailored account types that we have and de depending on what, what you need, right? Okay, so it gives you different access. So this is the VIP um, photo. Sign up if you if you want to take a look at our VIP portal, right? And this is how it looks like on the page itself. So depending on what tier you are at, there will be a different access to our different, um, you know, different currency pairs or different commodities. Okay, so this is the full access. You have the chit chat group where you can actually come in here anytime and you can say, hey, there's one. Uh, I want to know um, where gold will go, for example, and then you can enter. And one of us will be able to um, answer you in a short period of time. Sometimes we'll come to the potential setups and, and we'll post some of our top setups here. Okay, news-wise, it will be updated daily. You have your euro, all the important news that we have for the major currency pairs will be updated. So then we have our majors, okay, DXY, all your USD pairs, yen, and then your commodities like gold, indices, uh, crypto as well, okay, all your different crosses as well. So if you have seen anything here that, um, anything that's missing here, you can let us know as well. So how this page works is, for example, you can come here and then you can actually highlight different levels using the tools here. So it works kind of like a uh, trading view. So you can highlight important levels and you can say um, important level here. Will it break? So this is a question that you can post to us. So important level, highlight it. Okay. So this is how you interact with um, one of our analysts or prop traders. So you can actually highlight whatever levels that you want and then enter will be able to see it from our back end. And that's how we actually uh, respond to you. Okay, so you have all your different Fibonacci levels if you want to create, if you want to draw, etc. Okay. So this is how our tailored um, VIP portal looks like. You can check it out. I have paste, pasted the link on the chat box. Okay. So without further ado, maybe let us just start with today's session. Okay, so before I start, um, obviously I have to say um, the disclaimer first. So the information in this webinar should not be con considered as investment advice or investment recommendation, but instead educational materials only. So before you start um, trading, please do your own due diligence. Okay, so this is me, Annabelle. I work for the Everest Fortune Group, which is an analyst, as an analyst uh, for the award-winning research firm, finalist for best FX research 2019-2020-2021, as well as finalist for best equity research 2020 and 2021. Okay, 
So the agenda for today, like I've mentioned, let me grab a pen. Okay, we have, I will do a quick recap on the anatomy of trade. Uh, for those who have not um, seen this, right? The anatomy of trade, it, it talks about, you know, um, the different parts of um, a trade itself, the whole psychology of it. And then I will do a quick recap on the whole series, part one, two, three, before I start on four. Then we'll touch on what is trailing stop loss, which is today's topic. When do you use the trailing stop loss? The different techniques. And then I will go into um, example where it will cover all parts four or four. So I give you um, a, a full round. Okay, oh, sorry. I'll give you a um, full view of the whole part for, for trade management, right? How you can actually utilize it properly. So the anatomy of trade, um, for those who have not seen or heard of this, is that for, you know, as traders, you often put a lot of effort on your entry, right? We all, always take a lot of time to find very good setups. Okay. Um, we use a lot of effort and time to find the best setup to just get into an entry before we talk about our stop loss and take profit. Although at the back of our head, we might know that you know our stop loss take profit should be in a, a risk to reward one to one to two or one to three, right? I mean, this is at the back of it. But often than not, the setup is always more than 50% of our attention, right? You always want to find the best setup before all the rest kicks in. Okay, so what we want to tell you guys here is that the whole series that we have been talking about uh, for the past few sessions, not only the entry is important, they are all as important as um, the entry itself. So the reason why we need to know and learn stop loss take profit or even partial profit and um, trailing stop is because um, trading is a game of, um, it's a number game, right? So the more um, take profit you have, the more money you will make, correct? So for example, if you you are in a game of um, 10 trades, okay? For example, if you have four take profit, two stop loss, and, may, and maybe the rest of the four is a break even, okay? Means you have two take profit. But if, if you are in a game of 10 and you have four take profit, four break even, but if this stop loss was changed to maybe uh, two break even, another two break even, or maybe two trailing stop, for example, right? Your odds will be more than two wins, correct? Because if you have four TP, let's say you minus two trailing stops, probably you have a three TP instead, correct? So, you know, in trade, in trading itself, it's also about, we always say we want to maximize our profits and minimize our losses. So we always think about profit, but we always do not know how to control this part. That's why you have your break even and your trailing stop loss in place. Okay, partial profit and uh, take profit. Obviously, it's a bonus itself. Okay, so um, the whole point of here, I guess, is to learn how to minimize losses. Okay, so entry we all know how to do stop loss, take profit. Um, all these other parts, I will run through it quickly um, here. So for the part one of four trade management, we are talking about profit and stop loss recap. So in this um, trade itself, for example, we are looking at a, a range here, right? And we can see that obviously this is a resistance level. Obviously, this is a resistance level because it has came here once and twice and it's rejecting this level. So you know that this is a 
magnetic level that we are looking at. Correct? So this is a major resistance area, or I would like to call it a magnetic area that we wish to avoid, okay, if you're taking profits. So what we have learned here is that stop loss, you always put it <coughs> beyond because you want to give it some space for buffer, correct? You know that maybe price would actually come back here to test, right? Because this is a magnetic zone. So prices often than not likes to come to these areas to test again before <coughs> any other breakouts or any other mo major movements. So if you are looking at stop loss, we often do not like to place it above or we call it beyond so that there's space if it actually um, sort of bounce out or move out, break out a little bit. And then for our take profit, depending on whether you're in a long or short position, but in general, we always take before, okay, before the major resistance. <coughs> Sorry. We like to take profit before any major resistance level or any magnetic levels. So the reason being is because you know that price is always um, going to this level, but sometimes you know prices don't actually go to that level. It might bounce off here, right? And if you have the fixed <coughs> fixed um, take profit levels, for example, like 100 pips, do not be so fixated on this, right? Because if price actually come down here and reject it, you might actually lose your whole trade of your 90%. So we often and not want to be out of a trade before any commotion starts at the magnetic zone or in case it actually you know, moves away or reflects or bounce off um, before the magnetic zone. So just take a 90% and um, ignore this 10%, okay? In case, you know, prices actually come here and bounce off and doesn't hit your take profit levels, okay? So this is take profit stop loss recap. Just remember, stop loss is beyond. Take profit is before. Okay, this is the simplest. Now we talk about break even placements. Okay. So, can any one of you tell me what is um, break even? Right, I've covered this on um, my second session. Okay, some of you say a break even is, at, um, is to move your stop loss up, correct? Okay. Uh, for those who are new or who um, does not know what break even means, in simple term, break evens means that you do not lose any money or win any money. Right, but generally, if you enter a trade, you technically have already lost some money because of commission or spreads that um, the broker has already charged you. So in any case, for break-even placement, break-even is often when you are in profit already. Okay, Remember this. Break-even can happen only if you are in profit, right? There's no break-even when you are in a loss or if you're losing money. Okay, so break even also means that you move your stop loss up to your entry level, which also means that your um you have already made some money. If not, you wouldn't be able to move your stop loss up to your entry, right? So break even is a level where you are in profit, okay, often, and recognize that there's a risk of reversal. So it's basically you saying, if I am right, price should go all the way to my target. But if I am wrong, I should get out. Okay. So break even is a essential tool in preventing um, prices to go to stop loss. But some people might argue that, you know, break even, if you move it to break even, it also um, minimizes your chances of a full take profit, right? You could actually take a full profit, but instead you go to break even, which means you don't make any money out of this trade. That is why I often put break even together with my partial profit, right? So you move your break even up 
and then you take partial profit. So in case it actually comes back down, you are already, um, you already have some um, uh, profits in your pocket. Okay, so instead of a zero, you actually make some money. So <clears throat> in this instance, this example, I'll quickly run through it. You have you can see that prices are, uh, moving in an upward direction. So we are looking for a buy entry here. So we buy entry here at this level and then we see that, hey, you know, prices are actually not that great. You know, prices are ranging and I'm a bit worried that price might reverse. So when my price actually moves to this level, I am being triggered to move my break even. Okay, because I ent entered here by this level, I would have some profits, right? And this is the level that I'm worried also because maybe there is a retracement level, maybe uh, you know it's oversold or overbought, but in any case, it will be a level that um, one should take note. So at this level, I'll put a trigger and then I'll monitor. So if price actually retraced, you know, I might move my stop loss up. I might modify my position. But if let's say, it triggers here and I monitor it, but it goes this way, I might not have to move my stop loss. But for the purpose of the break even placement, yes, uh, we will just move uh, my stop loss line up to entry. So in case actually if price go up and comes back down, which happened, I will not have lost any money. Okay, so this is how break even works. It's often in profit, then you move up because that's the only chance that you can move your stop loss line. Okay, if you're in losses, for example, if price actually come this way, your position is here, you're long, but then it comes this way, you are you can move your stop loss here, but then you will be taken out. So it doesn't make sense at all. And then you will be in a loss. Okay, so this is what break even means. Often it's when you are in profit. Partial profit. Okay, these two are put together because um, it makes a good pair. So for example, this same thing, um, this is our break-even trigger. Okay, break-even trigger. Uh, we entered here, same position, we are longing. Okay, I move my stop loss here. At which point would we take partial profit? Um, some might ask. So that's the question that I get quite often. Where do you actually take your partial profit? I mean, that's quite a, a logical question, some might ask. So it's depending on your risk appetite or how much you have in mind to take, actually. Or you can go by, okay, so there are some, some ways to do it. So you can do by percentage of a trade size. You can go by pips, which I won't recommend because it might too, be too rigid. Actually, these two might be too rigid, but... Hmm... Um, I will just list out the options and I will see which one is the best option. Number three, so we have percentages, pips. These are some of the methods that people take profit, uh, partial profits anyway. So percentages, pips, uh, you can go by your trend lines as well, right? Maybe there's a major resistance that uh, th there's a confluence here that you are afraid, so I, I will take here. I think honestly, um, going by trend is the best because... Um, it makes the most sense instead of this tool. It works, but it kind of is slightly more rigid, right? Unless you're often um, watching the markets or watching your trade positions, okay? So um, by taking partial profit um, based on trend support levels, etc., confluence means that, for example, if uh, my price actually came to this level, okay, this is my... 50% retracement level. This is my, this is the level where my, um, there is a reverse, um, show as it called. Remember the term. Um, okay, there is a 50% retracement. Um, my projection, my 78.6% projection, um, where my support, my overlapping support or resistance is, you know, there are a lot of factors that is telling me that, hey, this might be an area that uh, price might do a reversal. So then I will do my partial profit taking here before it hits, okay? So that's why I say the third method, which is a trend support 
and resistance level or confluence zone is the best partial profit placement um, method that I personally choose because it's the most logical um, rather than having a fixed pips or percentages which, which work but you have to monitor it very often. Okay. And um, okay, now we have come to the third part, which is idea invalidation. Let's just name it I I. Okay, if um let me know in the comment section if you have any questions so far. And can anyone tell me what is idea invalidation if you if you can remember? Just a quick recap. Okay, um, I have a couple of answers. Okay, idea invalidation is where you, idea invalidation is a point where you are willing to close up. Okay, okay, that makes sense, yes. Okay, so what II means, uh, idea invalidation means is that um, when you have a position, okay, when you have a position, and you know that, hey, um, it has came to a point where I know that my trade is going in a the opposite direction and I'm wrong. It's a point where, you know, you should um, find a way to get out of the trade itself, okay? So when idea is placed, usually idea invalidation is placed before stop loss levels and usually at the zone of confluence so for example this is the line of this is the zone the confluence zone where you have all your levels that coincides your um ii should always be placed before it okay and it's a point where you admit that you might be wrong in the trade and price is and the price is going against you so the question is the question when it hits your idea in validation is how to get out. Okay, it's, it's a moment of hoping that price will, will come back to your break even and you get up ASAP. Okay, but sometimes it might not even come back up. So then you will hit your stop loss naturally. Okay, so idea invalidation is usually placed before your stop loss. It's a level where which you basically admit that you are wrong and you should get out of the trade ASAP. When this level is reached, your take profit is moved to your entry, giving you a small chance to get out at break even, but sometimes it might not even um, come back up, like I've mentioned. So for example, we are looking for a sell entry here. Okay, we are looking at short. Okay. And we have identified that this will be our confluence zone. Or rather, your idea in your idea invalidation and confluence zone, I would say, and then your stop loss is always beyond. All right. Remember what we learned the first series. Your stop loss is always above your confluence zone because you need some um, space for buffer. So this will be your II in purple. Okay. Now, let's say if my take profit is here. And then price came down here. Obviously, at this point, I'll be very happy because it's in my favor. But somehow, it's moving against me, right? This is how trading works, right? One minute is going for you. The other is going against you. So then it came here and it hits your eye. You know that, hey, I'm actually quite close to my stop loss already. And at this point in time, if it, if it goes up further, actually, at this point in time, you should already be in, in um, you should know that you are wrong in, in this trade. You know that it's a wrong trade taken, okay? And if it goes further, I think there's, there might not be any salvation um, uh, space anymore, okay? But if it kind of reverses here and you know that you are in a wrong trade, it's time for you to get out. So if your entry is here, you should move your take profit up to your entry level. Okay, in case uh, in case it reverses again, I know some of you might uh, be thinking that hey, you know this is a confluence zone. Um, I might 
be looking at a slight reversal. Okay. Uh, yes, you are, but once you know your idea is invalidated and you know that a price might be against you, you should get out of the trade ASAP because it might potentially hit your stop loss. And like what I've mentioned a million times, max profit mean losses, correct? This is what we aim for in any um trade uh, trade positions. Okay. So when your idea is already invalidated here you have to move your take profit up. So the difference between this and break even is that I know that although both are called break even, but break even is when you are in profit and it's when you move your stop loss up to entry. But idea invalidation is when you are in losses and you are hoping to salvage your position by bringing take profit up. Okay, this is the key difference between um, break even and idea invalidation. This is very important. If you need to, you can um, take a screenshot, but my handwriting is a bit messy. <laughs> okay. Okay, just a quick snap. Okay, if you have any question, do let. Any questions or question, do let me know in the comment section. I have another screen that is opened so I can see all your comments and all your questions. Okay. Okay. Maybe let me continue. So the key difference is um, these two one is stop loss, move up, one is take profit, move up. But generally, what we want to is for prices to come to our break even instead of hit our stop loss, okay? Okay, now we have come to part four of four, which is trailing stop loss. So can any one of you let me know what is a trailing stop loss or does any one of you even use a trailing stop loss? Personally, I've used it a couple of times, but let me know in the comments. Okay, I've seen some of you yeah, I've used yes. How, which what methods do you use for uh your trailing stop loss? Okay, so for trailing stop loss, how it works is we have different methods of using. Some people might be using um by percentages as well. Some of you might be using fixed uh pips, which is the most common. Let me just adjust my hand things. It's pips. So it moves by X number of pips whenever it moves up. Okay, so if if it's in a trend, um if it's all if it if the position or if the trade or chart rather is moving in very favorably of your position, then this will work, right? If it's a very trend-oriented um trade, then yes, this will work. But if it's slightly choppy you might be taken out quite quickly, right? So in today's session of trailing stop loss, we will have multiple um, techniques for you to, to learn and to, to identify, to see which one might suit you better uh, other than this, because most often than not, people use uh, fixed pips, right? For trailing stop loss okay, in MT4. So what is trading stop loss? It's an order type designed to lock in profits or limit losses as trade moves favorably. So there is the automatic and there's the manual. So automatic stop loss, meaning like what I've mentioned, uh, MT4, you know you can fix a uh, your stop loss. You can fix your stop loss according to number of pips. So for example, if your entry is here and it keeps going this way, this way, this way, every time it, so your stop loss is here, right? A big profit. So for example, every time it moves by X amount, and then your stop loss will go by X amount. Okay. X, X plus one, and then it will move by X plus one. Okay, for example. But um the downside of using this is when, for example, if um it moves up X, X, but then if it comes down, it might just hit. Okay, so it's depending on your trading method as well. Okay, or whatever that you are more comfortable with. 
um, this method works for some. Okay, so today we are focusing more on the manual trailing stop loss. So it's a moving stop loss level uh, based on mechanical indicators. So let's see how this works. So the types of trailing stop losses, let's see. Can any one of you identify all of this? There'll be a, a present that will be sent out. No, I'm kidding. Can you guys identify what are this trailing stop loss or what methods are we using here? And please take a guess. Okay, I've seen some answers. Uh, yes, there's a moving average, but that is which um, alphabet? <clears throat> okay, I see some trend, trend lines. Yes, trend lines. Could potentially be Fibonacci as well. There's no stochastic here. Okay. Okay. So for A, we have our moving average here, right? It's a very common tool used uh, based on the number of a moving average. There's 50, there's 200, but usually we'll go for the 50. And then there is B, which is our parabolic SAR, uh, stop and reverse, right? Um, it looks at um, how the prices are actually closer when, you know, price, how the dots, okay, how the dots and the prices are uh, connected and at which point in time it actually reverses. So it will tell you um, exactly when you can, or a signal rather, it will signal or alert you when price is about to reverse based on the dots. Okay, and then we have our ATR, average true range. You have, um, depending on how you actually set it, based on the settings itself, uh, we can use 22 periods uh, that multiply by three, depending. And then you have <coughs> your normal standard support and resistance, which is my favorite, or maybe it's just a very traditional um, old school method that people use quite often. Okay, you can use it as a uh, Fibonacci as well. So if you have learned Fibonacci, you can use this, but if you have not, you can check out our other series uh, where we talk about um, Fibonacci as a whole. And then lastly, we have the chandelier, okay. <clears throat> works quite similarly to your um, parabolic star, okay, in the sense that it will tell you when it reverses and how it's intercorrelated, okay. So now let's take a look at um, an example before I move on to um, real life trading view to show you guys how this part four for all the whole trade management series can work together to give you a better edge on how to maximize profit and minimize loss. Okay, so here we can see that there is a trend line. Okay, and we are looking for a breakout cell entry here. This is a key support level as well. So we're looking for a breakout cell entry. Okay, here. Yeah. Now we look at the moving average trailing stop loss. Same thing, break breakout. We're looking for a um, sell here. Probably my stop loss would be either here or this level, but let's just take it as this level. This is my stop loss, okay, for example. And then we plot up our moving average. Uh, this should be a 50 moving average, okay. This is my stop loss. And as price move down, okay, but do two, let me give you um, one advice is that for, um, for this trailing stop loss techniques that I'm about to share, most of them works well when there is a very strong trend line. Or uh, strong momentum. It doesn't work well with a a choppy, for example, like this, it doesn't work well um, in a choppy uh, situation. Okay, it, it's best work when there is a strong trend or strong momentum. So usually we will use this in a higher time frame, right? Because then you can see all this um, more clearly with less noise. Okay. 
So there's one advice that I want to give. So let's say my stop loss is here. This is my entry. Prices are going downward in favor of me. So let's say when prices actually move down to a certain level, for example, maybe at this level, okay, I would actually move my stop loss down after it breaks this level, right? Because this would be a key level that I'll look out for, like a previous swing low, correct? Once it breaks this level, I will move my stop loss up to this level here, where my moving average is. And do take note that these are all manual, um, manual trailing stop loss. So you have to come in intervals to actually um, take note of where your trailing stop loss is. Okay, it doesn't mean that you have to sit there and watch your trade, but rather in intervals, probably a couple of hours, or when you when there's an alert on your phone, or you can probably set alert as well. So <clears throat> when my price breaks this level, I will get an alert. Hey, you know, price has broken this uh key support level, and my price is still going down. So at this level, when it breaks drastically, I will actually move my stop loss down probably to this level, right? This is where it breaks, right? So before that, um, this zone won't be seen. So I would move my stop loss to this level where I can see my moving average, okay? So once this level, this key support is broken, I will move my stop loss down to this level here where my um, moving average is, okay? And then the next key level that I'll be looking at probably be this level here. Okay, so once it kind of breaks, then I will set an alert to move my um move my stop loss maybe here at this level, depending on what when it breaks. Okay, and so on and so forth. So when my price actually, let's say for every trend or every support resistance it breaks, I will move my stop loss accordingly and until a point where my stop loss is triggered. But by then, I would have made some money or some profits already, all right? Because your stop loss is being moved. So this is when my trailing stop loss is triggered. It's okay if it's triggered, right? Because when you have a trailing stop loss, you know that your positions is protected by this and you are already in profit okay so let me repeat again uh, for those who have not seen here how does a moving average trailing stop loss work is i will identify maybe some key levels and once it actually breaks i will move my this is my stop loss my original stop loss right so once it breaks this level i will have an alert hey you know this is broken I will move my stop loss to this level because my moving average is here. So my stop, my new stop loss is here. And when it maybe breaks this level here, I will move my stop loss here. Okay, depending on where my um, moving average is. So usually there is this buffer between your uh, price point and your um, moving average, right? What is that music? What is the SMA to be set up? Um, for Uma, maybe you can um, elaborate on what you mean by SMA 50. So we are talking about, for, this, for today's session, we are talking about trailing stop losses. And this is how we actually use a uh, SMA 50 to track our trailing or rather place our trailing stop losses. Okay. So I have mentioned I will identify where my major support or resistance level will be at first. Then as my prices move in favor of me, I will move my stop loss accordingly to where my um, SMA is. Okay. For example. Okay. See, so if usually when it breaks out of a trend, right? It often than not will fly in the uh, opposite direction. So the trailing stop loss actually got us out before this happened. Okay. Okay, I will show you how to set the SMA 50 later. 
uh, when we move to the live charts. Okay, so the trailing stop loss is important as a, as a tool because it helps you to profit this much before prices actually flew in the opposite direction. Okay. Then we have the my favorite, the trend line trailing stop loss is very simple because same thing, we are looking for a short position. This is my stop loss. As price move according to my trend line. Okay, this is my trend line, right? We are looking for, okay, so for example, if price actually moves down in favor of me, okay, I will move according, same thing, identify your support resistance. As price move according to your trend line downward, you can move your stop loss accordingly. So for example here, if it breaks this, maybe I'll move my stop loss here. If it breaks this level, maybe I'll move my stop loss here. Okay. And it's usually maybe slightly above where your um, support and resistance is, okay? Because you want to give them the extra buffer, right? Because your um, stop loss is always beyond, okay? Beyond your confluence, beyond your support and resistance is always beyond. You need that extra buffer, okay? And it, it's also dependable on what's your risk appetite as well. Okay, so trend line is rather simple. It actually works quite similarly. So for all the trailing stop loss, I would, my advice is that most of them, they work the same way because we have to identify where is the um, important key levels to look out for before we can um, mark up where um, we can place our stop loss. Okay, so break this level, I'll be looking at placing here. Break this level, I'm looking at placing here, which I got stopped out eventually. Okay, then we have the parabolic parabolic SAR trailing stop loss. So, um, what SAR stands for is stop and reverse. Okay, so as the word itself um, explains, okay, so these dots they actually tell you the momentum of a trend. Okay, as you can see here, right, the momentum of our trend is going down. And the further the price to the dots means the stronger the momentum. Okay, the further the dots, the stronger the momentum in um, downward or upward direction, depending on whether um, it's upward or downward trend. Okay, and if it's close, it usually signals that you know, hey, price might be reversing. There's a there's a chance that price might be in a um, going in a different direction, okay? It might be reversing. So it's a time to take note when prices are closer. Okay, so when price comes close to the dots, it's actually signaling potential reversals of the trend. So you have to take note when the price are really, really close. That's why there is a, so there's a downward trend. You can see that my, my dots are here, but once it actually breaks out of here, you can see that it goes in the end. My dot goes in the other direction. So when it goes the other direction, it means that my trend is reversed. Okay, that's why there is down and up. You can see this, this few lines that are um, out of nowhere is because the trend has reversed. Okay, this is how the parabolic star works. Okay. So how this um how do we use the parabolic star to actually help us um put our training stop loss? It's the same thing. So our breakout is here. We are looking to we are looking to move our stop loss accordingly because you have to ignore the rest of the part. Okay, because let's say we are looking at this level now, this price point. As it breaks this level, I will move my stop loss here. All right, because I won't be able to see the rest of the, uh, the dots. So it goes according to where your price is. Okay, so for example, if I break this level here, I will move my stop loss here. If I break this level here, I'll move my stop loss here. If I break this level here, I'll move my stop loss here, which I eventually got stopped out. Okay, so how it works is you have to come in manually uh, and check your position and you will move accordingly to where the parabolic star is telling you. So once it actually hits my, uh, you know, the dots hits my, 
my my um candlestick, it will actually it actually already signals um a reversal. Okay, so this is how you do your parabolic star trailing stop loss. And lastly, we have the chandelier and our average true <laughs> average true range. Sorry, I need to catch my breath. And I sort of forgot. <laughs> this is our average true range. Um depending on in the chandelier. So depending on what period you use generally for give me one second. Okay, generally for chandelier is period 22 multiplied by three three uh, three times ATR. Okay, to period of 22. This is the standard. Okay. So what the chandelier and the ATR does is it tracks the um the volatility. Okay. So it writes on the volatility of the of the chart itself. So for example, same thing. Um your stop loss is here, breakout. We are looking to move according to where your chart is going, where your trend is going. So um I would like to highlight again for your um trailing stop loss techniques that I have um taught you all today. It only works if it's trending in a trending momentum or in a trending um, direction. Okay. Usually if it's choppy like this, you won't be able to put your stop losses right clearly. So um this also don't work well with uh reversal trades. Okay, for example, if we are looking at a trend that is going this way and then you want to take a reversal here, right? It doesn't work because if we are look, looking for a buy, a stop loss should be here. So sometimes it, it doesn't work for a reversal trade um, position. Okay. Now let me bring you all to um, a real life example. I can do probably one real life example of all the uh, part one, two, three, four of trade management. Okay, just to show you guys the NX, 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 an example. Okay, before I actually have a runner for um some another webinar. So okay, let's start with our take profit stop loss. So take profit stop loss. For example, we are in a trade now. Okay, I'm looking at a double top sell. Sell entry here. Okay, your stop loss. Let me just place all the uh um lines first before I before I actually explain um, part one, two, three, four, okay? So remember always if, let's start with stop loss and take profit, yeah? So stop loss, let's say if you're placing here, remember if this is a key level that you're looking at, always place your stop loss above, correct? Because stop loss, where's my box? Loss often is beyond a profit always before. Let me make it bigger. Okay. So this is what we are looking at. If there is confluence zone that is here, okay, and then there is a key resistance level, there is a uh you know uh, retracement level whatsoever, right? You often then not do not want to place at that level because there is a very strong magnetic zone and price might come back here to test. So often your stop loss is beyond. But take profit often if this is the key level that you're looking at. There is a confluence zone here. You want to take profit before. So take probably like a couple pips before, um, rather than coming to this level where. Uh, you know, there might be some commotion or, you know, people, uh, general public might be already taking profit and then you want to take a risk. No. So you take profit before. Okay. You take profit before others. Okay. And then we have learned also your partial profit, your break even. So break even is when you are in profit and you move your stop loss to entry. Okay. So for example, if price actually uh your sell entry right you are already in profits okay so we are in good profits and then right here maybe at this level 
Okay, I might take partial profit because this level here might be my key resist, uh, key support. So I will take partial profit here and then I will move my stop loss to my entry because at this point in time, I know that, hey, I've taken some profit and if prices actually does reverse from here on, I know that I won't be in any loss. Okay. So partial profit and um, break even often come hand in hand. Okay. So you don't want to just take partial profit and leave your stop loss up here. So if it actually comes back here or even go to your stop loss, you are actually losing money. So it doesn't make sense. So often than not, they, are, uh, they work hand in hand. So take partial profit and then move your stop loss accordingly. And then we have our idea invalidation. That's the part where you want to salvage your losses. Okay. And it's often placed before your stop loss. So if price actually comes to this level here, that will be my II. Okay. So if price comes here and touch this level, I know that um, this trade won't work anymore. Okay. I will be thinking of ways to get out of my trade. I'll be thinking of ways to actually get out of my trade. Okay. Once it touched this level here. Okay. So the whole reason of having an idea in validation is a trigger point or a alert point where you know that, hey, you have to get out instead of hitting your whole stop loss. So what it means is if, um, if let's say my, um, my posi position hits my idea in validation, I will move my, I will want to move my um, take profit upwards to my entry. So always remember uh, is moving your take profit to entry. So one is stop loss to entry, one is uh, take profit to entry. Okay, that's the major difference that I've been highlighting to you guys. So you move your take profit to entry. So there is a chance that, you know, instead of moving all the way, it might come here, touch this level, bounce back, and then you get out of you get break even, okay, instead of getting a, uh, hitting your stop loss. So II is often a place or a trigger point where you want to uh, get out of the position fast. If you are lucky enough, you might, you know, get break even. If not, you'll just hit stop loss. And last, today, we are learning about stop loss, um, uh, different techniques, how to use it. So often than not, this one, writes on the trend or a strong momentum. It doesn't work if it's um, choppy or if it's not trending. Okay. So if you are looking at a, uh, for example, indicator. Okay, let me show you. Moving average, okay. So moving average, how you actually do it. Oh, shoot, where is it? Okay, now we are looking at a moving average. If you want to adjust it accordingly, just click. Let me see the 50. Yep. So this is MA50. So that is how uh, for uh, Uma, this is double click it and then you can adjust the length. Okay. So this is a 50 SMA. How you actually work is identify your uh, support resistance. This is a um, level that I'll be looking at. So once my, uh, so once my, So once my, this is my sell entry, it might take profit somewhere here. And then it's ignore. So once my, um, why is it? Why is it? You know, give me one second. Okay, so for example, let, let's just use trend line instead. So for example, if I'm looking at this level here, once it's break this level, maybe I would potentially move my stop loss to my sell entry. Okay, because this is a important level that we are looking at. Okay, so I might bring my stop loss to um, sell entry. Okay, and if it breaks this level and break this level, then I might move my stop loss down to this level. Okay, so this is... Um, the important thing that I want to leave you guys with. I hope you guys have um, learned as much as I did. Um, you can try it out, all the different methods that, that I have shared 
over this the four series. If you have missed any, just check out the INFX website or our YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in today. I have to rush off. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you.